Hey guys, tonight I'll be bringing you a very scary story. But first, today's sponsor is Chat Stories. I'd like to start off by reading one of the stories, just a couple of sentences, just so you can understand how it goes. Paul. Paul. Oh my god, Paul, remember what happened last year? And tomorrow's Halloween. Hey, Riza. Are you referring to Jane and her father? Yes, Paul. What if we're next on the list now? What the hell are you talking about, Riza? That was a tragic event. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen again. I'm scared, Paul. The ghost man hasn't been caught ever since. Don't mention his name. What? I thought you said nothing's going to happen. You're too... You're scared too, aren't you, Paul? No. As you can see, it's a very interactive story app. It brings people in and you get hooked instantly. I've actually already finished Zombie Island and it's very good. I still highly recommend it. Go over and check out the app. Trust me, you will love it if you're a horror fan. The link will be in the description down below. Now, with that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. So, you know the acrobat and the flea, right? I nodded as my brother, standing in the living room, delivered me his presentation. He was 16, and one of the smartest people I've ever met. That being said, he was also reckless, and sometimes his curiosity and crazy theories got the best of him. Imagine a tightrope, he said, stretching a piece of thread between his hands as a visual aid. The acrobat, he continued can only move in two directions, back and forth. I nodded again, starting to wonder what he was getting at. The flea, however, has two additional directions, forward, back, left, and right. This is seen as a metaphor, an aid for our understanding, per se, for just how much we cannot get to yet. We are the acrobat in this plane of reality. I nodded along again. But that's exactly what my question is. What if we had the ability to move like a flea? I shook my head. Damien, there's no way. But there is. He continued enthusiastically, dramatically beginning to write on the whiteboard he had brought. Dramatically beginning to write on the whiteboard he had brought in with him. It requires a great deal of chemistry knowledge, however, and has taken me about a year to research to get it to work. But I think it's finally ready. He rambled, not looking up from his writing. He finally capped the marker he was writing with and turned to face me. He had drawn a diagram on the whiteboard, illustrating his project. I didn't understand any of it. Basically, atoms like to fuse with other atoms to make compounds. But what if we utilize this to get places? He continued. He was delusional. I was sure of it. For example, oxygen likes to fuse with oxygen to make O2. It's just the way it works. They need to share electrons to be stable, and they usually bind to the closest oxygen in proximity. Yeah, I know how it works. I took chem in high school, I said. But what are you getting at? He paused and said his next words in nearly a whisper. I figured out how to teleport, Maria, he said as he leaned in. His words were laced with almost a sense of childlike wonder like a kindergartner who had found a cool rock and was showing it to his friends. How? I queried, my eyes widening with wonder. Had he really? What if, instead of atoms bonding with the ones close to them, that stabilized them, they bonded as we choose them to, with which ones we choose them to as well? He began to point to the pictures in the diagram he had drawn. Now, of course, they have to stabilize each other electron-wise, there's no controlling that, but I figured out a way to choose. For example, which oxygen bonds to which oxygen? I nodded. For this experiment, 
I use specifically water molecules, H2O, because the bonds they form aren't too hard to build and break, and they're quite abundant. I raised my hand timidly. My brother was three years younger than me, and it was kind of amusing that I was so confused by what he was saying. So sorry, I know I'm kind of rambling, and you look confused. To put it in the simplest way possible, I can take a hydrogen atom from my body and force it to bond with another hydrogen and an oxygen anywhere in the world, causing me, by some occurrence I can't explain exactly, to be taken with it, forming an H2O at the secondary location. But it works, and that's all I need to know. Have you tried it yet? I just told you it works. Of course I've tried it. He scoffed. Show me. I ushered. He sighed. If I must, skeptic. He said jokingly. I don't know how he did it, but almost instantaneously, he appeared on the other side of the room. Ta-da! I was beyond shocked. I was bewildered. There's no way. I stuttered. There is, my dear sister, and I discovered it. So, how do you get it to work? He paused. I, I don't know. I just do it. He shrugged. I like, I picture the atoms bonding, and it just happens. Thoughts were racing through my head at a hundred miles a minute. Do you, do you realize how powerful this is? I asked hesitantly. He thought for a minute. No, no I don't. Holy shit. He looked me on the eyes and then shouted excitedly. Holy shit. He smiled and jumped up and down with joy. He touched his head and made crazy hand gestures as he went on. I, I figured out how to control matter. I smiled. I was happy for him. But this whole thing was just surreal. It wasn't right. All I wanted to do was teleport. And, and... He paused, speechless from his own excitement. This is awesome! He squealed again. He blipped out of the room in the blink of an eye. And then, I heard him yell from the other side of the house. I'm over here! Then, the whiteboard disappeared. I followed his voice, and I found him outside. Once again in awe, I watched him examine the whiteboard. As I looked closer at what he was analyzing, I noticed a chunk of stuff fused to the back of the whiteboard. What's going on? I asked. It looks like, because the chemical compounds are more difficult to build and break, it did it the easiest way, and this mass formed. Why? He thought harder before answering my question. It didn't just make a simple water. The molecules in it are more complex. I shrugged. It's curious. I'll have to research it more. He muttered, before breaking into a smile again. The next day, I woke up to my alarm and walked out into the kitchen to get some water. Boo! Damien shouted from behind me. He wasn't there before. I see you're enjoying your discovery. I commented, playfully nudging him. Before I knew it, my nudge had caused him to lose his balance. He cried out in pain as he laid on the floor. Oh my god, are you okay? I'm so sorry. I frantically apologized and bent over to help him up. Only, he didn't get up. He winced and then looked at me, tears in his eyes. It hurts. Then, I noticed. His foot was stuck in the floor. That's what had caused him to lose his balance. And now... The bone stuck out at a grotesque angle. Maria, call 911 or something. It hurts. Oh my god. He moaned in pain. I hastily picked up my phone and dialed 911, and I sat next to my brother, clutching his hand until the emergency crew arrived. What the? The paramedic stopped short. As he went to examine Damien's leg, upon noticing his foot had clipped into the floor like a video game glitch, I'm stuck, he cried. The paramedic radioed in the fire department to try to get Damien out. Can you just unbond them or something? He gritted his teeth and shook his head. No, I can only make bonds. He let out another scream of pain, beginning to hyperventilate. The paramedic turned back around to face us and clipped his radio back into his belt. 
Damien didn't pass out until the EMT rolled up his pant leg and saw his bone. I even got nauseous looking at it and I could feel his pain. How did this happen? The fire department arrived with saws and other tools and chopped up the floor in order to get my brother out. His foot was still intact, but his leg was now broken because some molecule didn't form the right way. As he explained to me after he woke up in the hospital, he'll have to be non-weight bearing for about two months, as that was a pretty nasty break, the doctor explained. Say, how did you get stuck in a perfectly intact floor like that anyway? He queried. My brother shrugged. He was discharged three days later, having to stay in the hospital for a few nights due to the break needing surgery to repair. When our parents heard about it, they considered cutting the trip short, but my brother argued with them over the phone and insisted that he would be fine, so they didn't. Over the next few days, Damien was getting better. He wasn't as tired and grumpy, and he was in slightly less pain than before. I decided to bring breakfast into his room, and as I opened the door, the tray disappeared straight out of my hands and appeared in his lap. Damien! He grinned. You don't have to wait on me. I can do that all myself now. But what about your accident? What if something else happens? That teleporting thing doesn't seem very stable. You worry too much. I'll be fine. He said through a mouthful of eggs that I made. I left him to his own devices and decided to watch TV. I was hours into a rewatch of The Office when I heard Damien call my name. I followed his voice to the bathroom, and I found him standing on his crutches and looking in the mirror. Maria, he mumbled. Yes? Something's wrong, he said meekly, turning to face me. I looked at him in shock as I saw what had happened. Giant masses of stuff protruded from his head and body, like it had on the whiteboard. I could make out a PlayStation controller lodged between his eyes and a chunk of the console and wires dangling out of his chest. There were no wounds either. It was terrifying. I... I just wanted to play some video games. So... so I summoned my controller. And... and... His eyes started to fill with tears. I don't know how to undo all of this. My god, do you want me to take you to the hospital again? I asked my entire body shaking with anxiety. I was looking at my brother, who is now a mangled mess of random matter, and I didn't know what to do. No, they, they won't know how to fix it. I'm gonna try to fix it myself. He shut his eyes and concentrated hard, but nothing happened. In fact, it got worse. The masses grew bigger, and my brother began to fade away. He won't come out of the bathroom. Every time I go to check on him, it's worse. I try talking to him, but he's just not there anymore. It's also like the extra matter made him a zombie. I don't know what to do. My parents won't know what to do, and neither will the hospital. Even the kid who made the discovery, my genius brother, doesn't know how to reverse it. And the masses of matter just keep getting bigger. The bathroom door has started to bow outwards, and soon it will break, and the masses will grow into the hallway and the rest of the house. I don't know how far it will go. All I know is that my brother is still in there, trying desperately to make it go away. But alas, it only gets bigger. I don't know how big it's going to get, but my brother won't listen to my pleading for him to stop. Thanks for watching, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your story, my email and subreddit will be in the description below. And also, if you're not subscribed, please do if you want. And don't forget to like and comment as well. Have beautiful nightmares. And I will see you next time.